Now that the film is out, we can truly say that Dragon Ball Super Broly is a major accomplishment in both visuals and writing. The fight sequence is ranking as the absolute best in all of Dragon Ball, and the story both telling the tragic tale of Broly, as well as contributing a fair amount to the world of Dragon Ball. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of these new pieces of Dragon Ball lore. Vegeta the Fourth. Starting us off is something of an inconsequential fact, but an interesting one nonetheless. It was a rather well-known fact that Vegeta, his father and the planet the Saiyans resided on before their destruction all shared the same name. Vegeta was the son of King Vegeta, who ruled over the planet Vegeta. We've known about this naming scheme for quite some time, but in Dragon Ball Super Broly, we learned something new about the Vegeta lineage. In the movie, it was revealed that Prince Vegeta is specifically the fourth Saiyan to be named as such. This tells us a couple of important lore details. For one thing, we now know Vegeta's full official royal title is Prince Vegeta IV. Second, we know that Vegeta and his father weren't the only ones to be named Vegeta. Finally, in knowing that there were two Vegetas before King Vegeta, it tells us more about the history of the Saiyans and planet Vegeta. King Cold's Retirement Frieza was thought to be the head of his empire, but here was someone who was referred to as King, where Frieza was not. This left something of a plot hole that fans have been trying to figure out for years. The question of why King Cold wasn't leading the Galactic Empire he started. Apparently, the answer was simple. He retired. Dragon Ball Super Broly opened with King Cold arriving on planet Vegeta to introduce the Saiyans to his son. Following this introduction, King Cold announced his retirement from leading the Cold Force, stating that Frieza would now be taking over the Empire. Now that Frieza was in charge, the Empire would become known as the Frieza Force, explaining why King Cold seemed to come out of nowhere upon his introduction. As informative as this moment was for the Dragon Ball lore, it did leave out one key detail, the reason for King Cold's retirement. Perhaps it was because he knew his son was stronger, making him more fit to leave. Who knows? But for now, we can't be certain what his reasons were. Goku's new move. Goku has gained a lot of new techniques over the years, and it comes as no surprise that he displayed a new move in Dragon Ball Super Broly. In fact, he might have displayed several new attacks, some that we may have missed with how fast-paced the fights were. But one that definitely stood out was when he stopped Broly in his tracks with some sort of psychic technique. This technique was used by Goku in his Super Saiyan God form, and from what we can gather, it involves using energy to prevent an opponent from moving or attacking for a short period of time. This ranged grapple technique is brand new to the series, and although it doesn't have the same name yet, it tells us that Goku has further learned to use his Super Saiyan God form. Also worth noting is that Broly, after escaping this technique, learned to do it himself, immediately turning it back on Goku, confirming that, like Goku, Broly is capable of quickly learning techniques. Broly's God-Surpassing Power Speaking of Broly's power level, it's absolutely massive in the film. In just his base form, he was able to take on Vegeta's Super Saiyan power. And after going into a rage, he gained enough power to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Super Saiyan God. Things got even crazier when Broly went Super Saiyan, eventually ascending into a full-powered Super Saiyan form. It's safe to say Broly's power is crazy if he can beat Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue without even going past his first Super Saiyan form. Broly's display of power throughout the film, as well as a comment from Goku, tells us that the character may very well be stronger than a god of destruction, standing near to or on the same level as the likes of Universe 11's Jiren. Vegeta's Training Goals For the majority of Dragon Ball Z and even Dragon Ball Super, Vegeta's goals and motivations have almost always centered around surpassing Goku. After his initial defeat at the hands of the low-class Kakarot, Vegeta swore that he would get stronger, sparking a rivalry that was driven by Vegeta's desire to ascend to a power level greater than Goku's. However, in Dragon Ball Super Broly, we learned that Vegeta had a new goal in mind when it came to getting stronger. The present-day part of the film opened with Goku and Vegeta sparring leading Whis to ask the reason behind Goku's training. Goku answered with his usual, to fight strong enemies shtick, and when Whis asked the same of Vegeta, he gave a rather surprising answer. With great frustration, Vegeta stated he was getting stronger in order to face Frieza, were he ever to come back to Earth, blaming Goku for the villain's resurrection. This was a shocking answer for two reasons. The first being that it wasn't Vegeta's usual answer to the question, which was to surpass Goku. And the second reason it was so surprising was because it was rather noble and heroic. Sure, it's not like like Vegeta's a villain anymore, but to hear him straight up mention that he was training to protect the Earth came as a big surprise. 
other Saiyan survivors. The destruction of planet Vegeta and the annihilation of the Saiyan race remained mostly unchanged in Dragon Ball Super Broly. The final moments of the Saiyans are pretty much the same as they were in Bardock, the father of Goku, and other Dragon Ball franchise entries that depicted the events. However, there was one thing that changed in the movie, the number of survivors. In addition to Goku, Raditz, Vegeta, and Nappa surviving the destruction of planet Vegeta, there's also Broly and Paragus, who we know were additional survivors before the film premiered. However, there were also two additional Saiyans that we didn't know about until now. For context, when Frieza planned to destroy the Saiyans, he ordered them back to planet Vegeta, pulling them from their mission so they'd be in one place, making it easier for him to annihilate them. After destroying the Saiyans on planet Vegeta, Frieza put out a call to the remaining Saiyans, lying and stating that a meteor had destroyed their people. The Saiyans on the other end of this transmission were Raditz, Vegeta, Nappa, and two mysterious Saiyans. Though these two were never given names, it's interesting to know that there were more survivors of the Saiyan genocide than we thought, even if they end up dying before the events of the Saiyan saga. Tarble is canon. On top of confirming the existence of additional Saiyan survivors, the scene we just mentioned also confirmed something that fans have been wondering about for a long time. While mourning the destruction of planet Vegeta and all the lives lost, the two Saiyans we discussed earlier asked Vegeta and Raditz about their families, and in answering, Vegeta confirmed the existence of his brother Tarble. Tarble was first introduced in Yo! Son Goku and his friends return, a Dragon Ball OVA that was never dubbed in English. Tarble was more or less the center of the OVA's plot, but a Aside from this animated special, the character has never made another appearance in the franchise. Because of this, fans were unclear if he was actually canon, a question that was made even more unclear by the fact he was alluded to in Battle of Gods, but not in the Dragon Ball Super adaptation of the story. However, this scene in Dragon Ball Super Broly finally answers the question of whether or not Tarbell exists in the main canon of Dragon Ball, Vegeta's mention of his brother confirming it. Power can break reality. In both Battle of Gods and the Dragon Ball Super Saga that adopted its plot, we learned something interesting about battles between godly combatants. As Goku and Beerus clashed, their power sent out shockwaves that could be felt across the universe. Not because they were so loud, but because the sheer power of the battle was starting to rip at the fabric of the universe. This idea was cool, but it was pretty much dropped after the Beerus Saga of Super. However, it may have returned in Dragon Ball Super Broly, since there's a point in which Gogeta and Broly's battle goes completely insane. After a clash of energy, Goku and Broly are transported to a strange battlefield that looks like reality itself is shattered. Though this part of the film is yet to be explained, even Gogeta utters a confused, what the? If we take a leap of faith and assume it's connected to the universal shockwaves of Goku and Beerus' fight, then it tells us something interesting about the world of Dragon Ball. If our theory is correct, then too much power clashing together can rip apart the universe, specifically in the form of two god-level combatants battling each other with everything they've got. We saw the possibility of it happening in the Beerus Saga, and in Dragon Ball Super Broly, we may have seen it actually happen. Saiyan Electricity Weakness This is another one that is part theory, part fact, but it's still worth exploring. In the original Broly movie, Paragus created a necklace device to control Broly's bloodthirsty personality, calming him down so his sadistic nature didn't come out. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, this idea was changed around a bit. Instead of Broly being sadistic in nature, his power sometimes makes him lose control. And when that happens, Paragus uses a remote to shock Broly into submission via a collar around his neck. The change from a person personality and power dampener to a simple shock collar tells us something interesting about Saiyans. They may have a weakness to electricity. Normally, Saiyans are depicted as being largely immune to all kinds of attacks, hazards, and extreme environments. Heck, Goku and Broly fight in a magma pit and come out unharmed later in the movie. Yet Broly is shown crying out in pain when shocked by the collar, which Paragus claims only uses a low-level shock. Vegeta's King Status Vegeta is a very proud person. Everybody knows that. He's especially proud of the fact that he's of royal heritage, constantly referring to himself as the Prince of Saiyans throughout most of Dragon Ball Z. But we've always wondered if his father perished in the destruction of planet Vegeta, wouldn't he then be king? This question was answered in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Though fans may have inferred this before, Vegeta states with great disappointment that he'll never be King Vegeta following his planet's destruction. Perhaps because there would be no planet to rule over, Vegeta thought that he could never be king. But this doesn't explain why he 
he's still quick to point out his status as a prince. Another theory is that without the king around to pass on his position in a coronation ceremony of some sort, Vegeta's permanently stuck as a prince. Regardless of the semantics, Dragon Ball Super Broly at least gave us a vague reason why Vegeta only thinks of himself as a prince, and not a king, stating the destruction of planet Vegeta as the reason. Of course, this isn't a major revelation or anything, but it has been on fans' minds for quite some time. And with the release of Dragon Ball Super Broly, we now know the reason behind Vegeta's refusal to think of himself as a king. And that's everything Dragon Ball Super Broly added to the canon of the franchise. Was there anything we left out? Did you already know all of these facts beforehand? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more Dragon Ball content. Thanks for watching.